Alrighty. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about the Ragnarok. Now, in short, is it worth it? Yes. Those of us who have been playing the game for a while know that Ragnarok is incredibly important, mainly because fire in general is a strength versus ice and grass. And when you look at the board, there's a lot of things that are grass. And then when you get up into the higher areas, most of these guys are some form of ice, especially when it comes to Frost Stallion. Eileen is dark, but most of these lower pals here in the bottom part are a lot of grass types. You have Verdash, Valet, Wampo Botan, Orsec, who's a combination, Elizabeth, Patalia, you have the Bronze Cherry down here. There's just a lot of grass types that are really early game. So fire is very important, especially for end game when most people's first pal that they go after end game for the level 50 is Frost Stallion. Easiest one to get when you have a lot of fire going. And the the fact that you could do double damage while wrapping her in vine or quadruple damage while wrapping her in vine because she's already weak to fire you wrap her in vine she's then weakened again taking four times more damage with a lot of the applied damage type pals like applied fire applied electric so on and so forth you're really looking for a couple of different things with the ragnarok itself you want to be running like seed mine or something that's gonna invoke a vine wrap and something that you can can spit out pretty quickly to continuously have them wrapped in vine because you're going to get more damage off of them regardless the only ones that can't really be wrapped in vine is something like blaze mud or any other type of grass pal that you're going after can't really be wrapped in vine but they're still weak to fire so also another thing to note with the applied is you're the one that's going to be doing the damage off the back of it while either flying or riding or when you're fighting together you're the one that's going to be doing the damage so with that being said, your passives can be a various amount of things. I say that the two that are unnecessary would be Legend, just because Legend is such a beefy passive in general. You get 20 attack, 20 defense, and 15% increase to movement speed. Like, you can't go wrong with that in particular passive on anything, really, except for work pals. But any type of fighting pal, you want Legend on it. One of the things that I usually do as well when it comes to applied damage pals is I run Vanguard and that's kind of a necessity because you really want to be doing as much damage as possible and with this added you're doing an extra 10 percent it used to be different when riding on a ragnahawk beforehand when you were riding on the back of them then it would be a major increase to attack power by about a hundred percent or i think it may have been even higher than that it was something pretty crazy when you five starred them or four starred them but now they have lined up evenly with the ones that can fight beside of you as well so wixen is on par with a ragnahawk as far as damage output while fighting together or while riding but yeah you can see here i do have a bit of attack increase with the passive from the ragnahawk that's 10 percent, and then we jump onto the back of them when it's at full five star then it's at 30 percent. so with the full four star level five partner skill you're getting an extra 20 percent increase to damage while riding on the back of a Ragnarok or while fighting together with Wixen or so on and so forth. So another thing as well, considering the fact that you are the one that's doing the damage, then usually what you want, you want to be doing is Gobfin stacking behind them. With the Gobfin specifically, their partner skill, they have a little lightning strike thing, but at the same time, their main usage is while in team increases players attack power. With running these guys at a full four star, you're setting at an extra 20 percent each one if you pair that with vanguard then that is another 10 percent added to each gobfin so you have 50 percent just from vanguard if you're running a applied damage pal with vanguard and then on top of that each one of the gobfins that you that you run you're gonna want vanguard on as well i prefer to use stronghold strategist as well the other two is kind of whatever you want if you really want to do something with them but i personally just don't don't worry about it that much whenever i was breeding mine i did keep the ones with mine forming or something on there just because you know you go out and mine stuff when you have like a five stack of mine forming 
you go through rocks pretty quickly if you're on your own but with dig toys being upgraded it's kind of useless now with that also with astagon being where supposedly you can get more ore and i think it's just metal ore i've tried them on the on the sulfur and i didn't get any more than i usually do so that's why i just run around with dig toys anyway because dig toys is really good for pocket mining throw them out there get a bunch of stuff or if you really want to you don't want to worry about that use a pickaxe then you can use mine for them behind this stuff but when you gob fin stack basically you're getting 30 percent each gob fin an extra 10 percent from here if we take and full gob fin stack the line with our other bit of vanguard we're sitting at 130 percent increase and then if you so happen to have these attack pendants these are 15 a piece i'm pretty sure the way it goes is it's 15 a piece on the blues the green attack pendant i think is 10 and then the common is five percent so either way these are going to be giving you a bit of a boost and so we got an extra 30 percent from that so now we're rocking 160 percent one thing as well when it comes to the ragnahawk or any other applied damage pals if you're gonna put souls into them then your best bet is to be running souls on their defense and their health to put attack souls into them is kind of not necessary you can but like i was saying before with the passives themselves these two are a must but when it comes to the bottom half of your next two it can be either burly body swift runner stronghold strategist so on and so forth but stronghold Stra i personally use stronghold strategist because it's 10 percent increase to player defense and when you're running that on the gob fins then that means that you have 50 percent increase to player defense so you got a pretty decent amount of defense on you yourself i have seen people run stronghold strategist vanguard legend and burly body i have done that before but you're kind of limited on the amount of speed that you have out of the pal some people ditch stronghold strategist and go straight speed with swift and runner and have vanguard and legend that way you have 15 percent increased movement speed from legend then 30 from swift and 20 from runner so you have the movement speed to avoid getting damaged this really just depends on which enemy that you're going against for this in particular run we're not going to put souls into the ragnahawk because this is a decent one with its ivs he is in the 80s with his health and defense and he has decent attack as well that was just what happened but when i was breeding them i was going for health and defense specifically so we're gonna go level him up real quick and then we'll show what he can do so now with the ragnahawk we're sitting at 4375 health and 861 defense so not bad stats at all and if you really wanted to up the ante then you could feed your ragnahawk or applied damage pal some sort of defensive buff such as the rush or hot dog so with the rush or hot dog we're sitting at 1033 defense which is pretty good we're going to go ahead and gobfin stack so we're sitting at 145 because we took one of our attack pendants off but i can switch that in and out and then we'll eat food as well with the attack locomoco and now we're sitting at 468 attack power and this is also with not too many points into attack power if i were to respec we could get upwards of 600 something if i'm not mistaken that's what i was running before one thing that i do like to do as well i'm a big fan of the shotgun in general and if those of you who saw the bellinor fights that i did my legitimate tries the closest that i got to killing bellinor ultra was with the shotguns just because you can put down a lot of damage very quickly and the way that i am shooting those to shoot them that quickly is that basically you shoot once with one of them and then flip to the next one so it's shoot flip shoot flip shoot flip shoot flip until you're through all of the shells then kind of go back reset and reload while you're out of range of her attacks and then once you're filled back up go back in for another volley of shotgun shells and yeah it does a considerable more amount of damage the ar can be shot at range i personally don't mind it but at the same time i just got closer with the shotguns and one thing that i will say is that i am going to change is i'm going to bring four more more shotguns that way when she does get knocked instead of reloading these shotguns i'm going to drop all of these out and put the new four in and get 
up on her and be able to put in as much damage as possible as quick as possible that way i'm not fiddling with the reload or if she does end up getting uh stunned in the middle of a reload that way i can just flip out all of the shotguns that are currently needing refilled and then put in all the new ones that way i can be able to deal the damage that is necessary while she is in that low state because you can get a lot of headshots that way another thing that i will mention is in my ragnarok versus pyron video that i did talking about what i would prefer over ragnarok is more tanky i still stand by that but i also stated that the pyron was faster than the ragnarok if you look up the data mine stuff that's not true at the same time there's something that's not calculated in that and is that that is overall acceleration and with the pyron i feel like it moves quicker so i should have been more specific when i said that some people thought that i was saying that the pyron was faster but i, I may have said that but at the same time i meant quicker is what i meant in other words it's there's a difference between fast and quick you could tell just by the movement right here that it takes a minute for the ragnarok to kind of turn around and everything the pyron has much faster acceleration to be able to get in and out of areas as well so we'll show this we got ourselves the frost stallion we're gonna eat some more of the locomoco to get our stuff settled back up and as of right now we're sitting at 180 percent on our passive with a 20 percent boost to food at 500 attack power to show how quickly this can happen if i could aim So yeah, you saw that. It's pretty quick. <laughs> now, this is also everything at like maximum potential. Ragnarok lost a pretty good bit of health right there because I could not uh, steer clear out of the stuff. Plus, my armor got broken, which I'm going to have to go repair. One thing that I didn't do there that I will suggest is running a seed mine or something off of the attack from the Ragnarok because you're looking for the wrap up with the vine. I uh, forgot to do that. So I need to go ahead and put that on and we'll test this against some other stuff as well. We're going to test this against jet dragon and since we are in the lava we had to put on our multi-climate shirt plus two because if you don't you start burning up very quickly so in order for this to work really well and we're going to seed mine him to slow him down because he is very fast and this will also increase our damage <laughs> yeah that was uh, incredibly fast wow let's take them against paldeus and necromis in the desert it's not quite hot enough to have to use the multi-climate shirt so we can actually stand to be on the back of the ragnarok while having our extra 15 percent because we had to switch out that was the other thing we took down jet dragon ridiculously quickly and we were still 15 percent less on that and again my in particular stats are not to the maximum effectiveness of my attack power i think i got up to a thousand in weight and then the rest i put in i put my stamina up to 200 and then the rest i put into attack all right we got paldeus and necromus here we're gonna eat our food we gave our ragnarok the rush or hot dog which at level 50 we're at 1054 defense with the hot dog all of the shotguns are reloaded we'll attack with seed mine first Even though he's not wrapped, we'll still be able to do a decent amount of damage here. Ooh. Took a lot of damage on that. Ooh. 
little fight there. Took a decent amount of damage because we phase tanked the uh, dark laser, which was probably not advisable, but we still beat him pretty quickly. And with me being on controller, the way that I have to do this shotgun trick is pretty interesting because I have to take my left thumb, which would be on the thumbstick for movement, and move it over to my other thumbstick while I'm using my Y to switch weapons and then trigger as well so i have to use the right thumb to pull down on the right stick to try to keep my shots in line that's why you see because whenever i ads on cer certain things it is a lock to it but at the same time like it puts that lock above the target sometimes so it's a little weird that way it does that with azarobi a lot those of you on console or that use the uh auto lock so for the final fight we're gonna pit him against the hardest tower boss here with victor and shadow beak we'll see what kind of damage we get out of this see how quick Quickly, we can put down Victor and Shadow Beak. Yeah. Almost got him to half health, and that's without seed mine, too. If we can seed mine them. There we go. Two volleys. There you go. So with the final conclusion, we already stated at the beginning, but is Ragnarok worth it? Absolutely. Especially with him adding additional fire to your attacks and being able to seed wrap or vine wrap or ivy cling, however you want to call it, to give additional damage clearly very very useful and it really doesn't matter what type they are as long as you're not doing something that can't be wrapped or not weak to fire or takes reduced damage from fire such as blaze of mud but even with that we could still take this guy in there and do work to blaze of mud because we just beat jet ragging in like what less than 30 seconds or something one volley of shotgun and we did victor and shadow beak in three volleys with me missing a lot of shots because the ads doesn't want to aim down sometimes which is really weird i'm gonna have to turn that off that might help me get my shots on for bella noir because i noticed it was doing that as well you can't go wrong with ragnarok a lot of damage potential and very useful or even as early as you can get them with uh breeding up and stuff it was definitely one of the pals that i used to get my frost stallion at first and then i used frost stallion to get jet ragon then i used jet ragon to get pouties and necromis just to keep him volleyed with that rocket launcher on his back so yeah if you enjoyed this video drop a like if you guys enjoyed my content drop a sub and right down in the comments comments down below your feelings about old Ragnarok. Other than that, we'll see you guys on the next one. Keep your willy wash and peace out.